Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Sweet Dreams. Which is a horror game where you take a train ride and meet a conductor that you can totally trust. Quick note that this game is loosely connected to another game I played called Missing, and they do share the same lead characters. Ah, <sighs> I'm pooped. Can't wait to just collapse in a nice comfy bed. You yawn again, yawn. At this point, it's a fight to even keep your eyes open. Tiredly, you pull out your phone and check your arrival status. Not for another hour, huh? This place is really out in the boonies. Your destination is Border Springs, an idyllic little countryside town. Is there springs and borders there? It's where you were born and raised, although you have little to no memory of the place anymore. I want to go home already. This entire trip had been your mother's idea. Ring, ring. Speak of the devil. And he appears. Beep. Hello? Lee. Is that my mom Alucard? Unruly red hair, piercing eyes. A successful and ruthless businesswoman. Even now, she speaks to her only child. There is not a hint of tenderness in her features. Hi, Mom. Did you arrive yet? Not for another hour. I see. How's the ride been so far? It's different. Everything here is so outdated. This train looks like it was made like 200 years ago. 147 years ago. The railroad never bothered to upgrade it. But it does its job. Once a week it goes to and from the nearest city for supplies. Pick up the occasional passenger on the way. Although people don't tend to take this route in the first place. You should be glad it's still running. The only other alternative to getting to Border Springs is by foot. Was this, like a mountain town? Thank you, Miss CEO of Trains. It still sucks and I still want to go home. You're spoiled, that's why. I've called you for far too long. You do nothing all day but stay in your room playing video games. How horrible! It's time you get out into the real world. And pay your bills and taxes and rents are unaffordable. By shipping me off to some place where Ramona doesn't even show up on the map? It's your breath place. You'll be thanking me, Lee. Besides, you have Petunia there. I'm not even that close with her anymore. We're, we've barely spoken since I moved. You got along just fine ten years ago. Make it work. I have a mean to go too soon. Let me know when you arrive. Bye, little plum. Ah. <sighs> Bye, mom. Uh, mom's still kind of attractive. So much for that, I guess. You look around the passenger car. Like your mother said, there weren't many people taking this train in the first place. The passenger car was practically empty, and ideally you'd use this time to doze off a little. Keyword being, ideally. Look at that couple over there. Aw, oh, babe, I love you so much. I love you so much more. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> it's not like we're getting a wink of sleep anyway with how loud that couple behind me has been this entire ride. <sighs> I'll just go to the restroom. Blushes some cold water in my face might help wake me up. You get up out of your seat and... Ow, oh, excuse... Me? Yes, you can so totally trust this person in these bright red eyes in this monochrome world. Trust that person. Ah. A familiar face looks back at you with concern. So, I did play a different game called Missing, where this character was there. Now, I think Missing is not canon anymore, or it never was. It was just like a teaser. But this, this is like the main game, or at least part of the saga. So, if you remember that character, this is the same one. Ah, uh, are you hurt? No, sorry, I wasn't looking where I was. Going? You squint at him. Those droopy eyes and nervous demeanor. It reminds you of someone. Uh, have we met before? Are you hitting on me? What? No, n no, I'm not. I'm trying to survive. Sorry, I'm. It was a dumb question anyway. 
No, not at all. Um, I'm Crow. He shyly motions to himself. Call! I work here. Let me know if you need anything. I'm at your service. Right, uh... You yawn in his face, but quickly catch yourself. Sorry, that was rude. I'm not yawning because I'm bored, I'm just really tired. You shake your head, hoping you didn't offend the poor dude of your rude behavior. Don't know what's up with me today. It's alright. You must have had a long trip. Yeah, been traveling all day. I can tell by those impressive bags underneath your eyes. Is it that bad? No, no. You're perfect. Oh, oh, I, I know. How about something caffeinated to drink? It's not poison, is it? It'll be on us, as an apology for bumping into you. Um... Green tea. Sure, let's relax a little bit, maybe we can take a nap. You could definitely use some caffeine in your system. My dad used to be obsessed with green tea. Time to see what the hype is all about. You've never had green tea? How old are you? That would be nice, like a... I'd like a... Yawn, interrupting yourself midway. You blink back the tears. Crow gives you a smile. Rest up for a little bit. I'll have your green tea ready as soon as possible. He starts to walk away. Hey man, I hear you're giving out free drinks. How about two more for us as well? It's our anniversary! The girlfriend cuddles closer to her boyfriend in display of... I don't know, showing off how not single she is? Crow gives him a polite smile, but it's clear he's not quite sold on the idea. Sensing the imminent rejection, she turns to you for backup. Help a girlie out! It's our anniversary! New drinking game. Take a shot every time she mentions her anniversary. You seem like the type that would die in a horror game. I mean, maybe we'll see it. Maybe, maybe the jury's still out, right? Despite the girlfriend's incessant nagging, she's, you still feel obliged to assist her. Be here if I want to help out. It's still really impolite for me to impose on Crow's generosity by asking for additional drinks. I'll have to turn the couple down. You try to face the couple who are giving you that hopeful, expectant look. Their big, pleading eyes. Ah. Uh, I'll just offer to cover their part of the bill. That way everybody's happy. Even if it's at your own expense. Don't do that! You nod to yourself. Have you decided on the best course of action? How about I just pay for the... Well, I can't be disappointing our lovely patrons on such a special day now, can I? The pair visibly perk up at his sudden shift in tone. So, what would you two like? I'll have some drought beer. How about you, babe? Surprise me, but make sure it's a romantic drink made with lots of love. Oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. Subscribe to your Disney Plus. Oh, I love you. Wah! Their mushiness and unabashed PDA makes you cringe a little inside. Crow and the Aranda seem to be the least bit phased. Of course. A very happy anniversary to a lovely couple. I'll be back momentarily with everyone's beverages. Thanks, man. Don't take too long now. Having gotten what they want, the two go back to loudly cooing over one another. You slump back into your seat, relieved that the unwanted attention has been shifted off of you. Unfamiliar scenery passes you by as you stare out the window. This is the first time I've traveled so far away on my own. In fact, I can hardly remember the last time I left my apartment. Not since I dropped out of school, anyway. Was the sky always this blue? I never knew how pretty it could be. You drowsily open your phone, hoping to send a picture to Petunia. Connection lost. Yeah, sometimes over those mountains. It was fine earlier. You won't have much luck getting a signal from here on out. Whoa! You nearly jump out of your seat. 
You need to hear him approach you. Did I scare you? A little. Haha. <laughs> Sorry about that. He gingerly hands you a piping hot cup of green tea. You grab the cup, taking a tentative sip. The green tea is rich and strong, smooth in flavor with a soothing aroma. You blink. Whoa, this is really good. He beams. I'm glad you like it. He motions to the seat across from you. Mind if I join you? Oh, uh... Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I... Um, I didn't mean to overstep my boundaries. It's just... It's not often I get to chat with others while I'm on my shift, since we rarely have anyone else on board the train. He looks embarrassed, and you feel a twinge of guilt. No, no, it's okay, you can sit down. On this thumbtack. Ah, oh, thank you. You sigh. You just can't say no to others. Especially not when they have that lost puppy look on them. That's not a puppy. That's a tiger. He plops down across from you with a sweet smile, and you're able to take a good look at him for the first time. White hair, red eyes, long lashes, and a gentle expression. He seems so... otherworldly. He might actually be... like I wouldn't be surprised. You're sure you remember someone of such distinct features? And yet, what's with this weird sense of deja vu? I know I've been here before. Um... Make conversation. Socializing has never been your strong point, but you do want to get to know him better. You attempt to strike up a conversation. So, um... You desperately grasp at something. Anything to say. You, uh... Your eyes rest at his amelanistic -mel hair. You have... White hair. Okay, that was bad. Terrible, even. You pray to every god imaginable under the sun that he didn't take offense to the inquiry. There's a small look of panic on his face. Do, do you not like it? Oh, no, no, not at all. It's just a little unusual. Wow. I've never seen anyone with white hair before. Not even Midport. Midport? That big port city? Yeah, have you ever been there? It's a little embarrassing to admit, but I've never left Border Springs before. Really? From what your mom had told you, the only way to get in and out of the sleepy rural town of Border Springs is via this specific train, due to its difficult surrounding terrain. You'd have assumed that someone with such easy access to transportation would have taken the opportunity to travel and work elsewhere. So all this time, you just worked on this particular train, but you never left your hometown for someplace new? He sheepishly stares at the ground. Um, I like this train. He clearly has other reasons, but his attempt at an excuse is, if anything, comically endearing. You can't help but find it cute. Hee <laughs> hee. What is it? Nothing, I'm just having fun. Me too. For you, talking to others was a strenuous task. You often struggled with finding the right topics, the right words, the right way to behave. But with Crow, you felt strangely comfortable in simply being yourself. I sure hope your name is pronounced Crow. And I'm not really sure how else you would pronounce it. Craw? <laughs> it almost felt as if the two of you were merely old friends, doing some catching up. Till something horrible happens. You haven't had this much fun talking to anyone in a long time, but although you wanted to continue your conversation, Extreme fatigue was starting to sell in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Your eyelids feel heavy, and your movement's sluggish. You try to blink back the sleepiness to no avail. Sorry. I'm tired. Crow shakes his head and smiles. Here. He leans forward, gently pressing his forehead to yours. Whoa, 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 whoa. He removes his gloves. Placing hand on the side of your face. You attempt to move back, but he firmly firmly holds you in place. Don't move. You feel the heat rising to your face. 
Instantly, a feeling of clarity overcomes you, and you begin to feel awake. With renewed vigor, you pull back, face still beat red. Whoa, 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 what was that? Crow leans back and smiles, pulling his gloves back on. He rises from his seat with a playful quip. Maybe, like I said, you might be actually supernatural. Looks like that woke you up. He's got a surprisingly cheeky side as well. Were you trying to shock me awake? You could say that. Oh, I forgot to finish up something in the other car. I have to go. You start to leave, and you find yourself calling out after him. Oh, uh, Crow! He turns to you, a little surprised. Oh, what, what is it? I'll be around Border Springs for the next few months. No, don't say that! I um, don't have a lot of friends. No! If I'm being honest. But I feel like we would get along. So would you um, like to hang out sometime if you're around? W w really? Really? You nod your head. You can feel your face grow warm at your own boldness. It was pretty off character for you to do something like this, and the nervousness was starting to sell in. But Crow doesn't seem to notice. In fact, he seems pretty overwhelmed himself. I would. Uh, yes. I could show you around Border Springs. Yeah, that sounds fun. I it's a promise, then. Okay? He holds out a pinky, and can't help but laugh at the childlike gesture. You pinky swed! You reach out and hunk your pinky around his. Promise. Crow sways back and forth in excitement. Thank you, Lee. I'll be sure to make you happy. Will you? He pauses mid-celebration of suddenly remembering something. Ah, I got so excited. I nearly forgot again. There's something I really need to finish up doing in the other car. He gives you a sheepish smile. Sorry, I've got some things to attend to, but I'll catch up to you when it's time for us to get off. Make sure to wait for me right here, okay? So that I can find you later. He waves you goodbye as he exits the passenger car. Where's the, uh, couple at? You respond with a small wave of your own before looking out at the passing scenery from your window. There's a warm and giddy feeling in your chest from having made a new friend. Maybe this trip to Border Springs won't be so bad after all. Ending one, an old friend. Huh. That went a little too easy. So we made conversation and we didn't die? Sit in silence. You did invite him to sit down. But if you're being honest here, you're not a very sociable person. In fact, you have almost no interest in talking to the stranger at all. Curse my introversion. This is why you have no friends, Lee. You sit in an uncomfortable silence for a while, unsure what to say or do. After a while, Crow decides to take the initiative. What brings you to Border Springs? Oh, uh, just visiting. From where? Midport. Ah. So that's where you've been all this time. The big city. Uh, yeah. I live there. There's a curious look in his eye. When's the last time you came to Border Springs? Oh, well, um, probably like 10 years or so? I don't know. Why did it take you so long to come back? I... You instantly re reach up to check if your bangs are still probably covering up the scar on your forehead. I... Let's answer the question, for the audience's sake. You sigh. I got into an accident when I was a kid. I don't remember much about what happened, and my parents refused to talk to me about it. Hmm. We moved to Midport shortly afterwards. My dad wanted me as far away from this place as possible. Hmm. Mom probably doesn't care though. She just wants me out of my room and out of her hair. Crow smiles. An accident. Huh? He stares at you. Intense eye contact starting to make you feel uncomfortable. What was it? You nervously tug on the stray strands of your hair. The memory of the accident wasn't something you wanted to or could even revisit. Any attempts at recollecting your thoughts were made of blanks or hazing feelings at best. And despite your parents' insistence, you know it wasn't some sort of freak accident. On that night, ten years ago, you almost died. You shake your head. Why couldn't you remember? 
Something was evading you. Pieces of the puzzle got missing, Crow. But there was one thing you knew for certain. You weren't the only one present there that night. The air feels suffocating. What happened on that day, ten years ago? On that day, ten years ago... A hand on your shoulder brings you back into reality. And you look up at Crow, who gives you a concerned smile. Are you okay? You take a shaky breath in and nod. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Sorry, didn't mean to dump all that on a stranger. Crow shakes his head. No, no, I was the one who asked. Thank you for indulging me. Yeah, no problem. I'd love to talk with you some more, but I do have other passengers to attend to. But I'll be back shortly to collect your cup. Would you mind waiting for here for me until I return? Sure, I mean, there's nothing else we're going to do anyway. Crow beams. Wonderful! Well then, I'll be back. It was nice talking, Lee. I gave you my name before, right? He rises from his seat, gives you a small bow, before exiting the passenger car to the dining car, closing the door behind him. You watch him leave, then fidget around nervously. There's something off-putting about him. You sigh. You never been good with strangers or people in general. He's been nothing but kind to you, and here you are struggling to like the guy. Oh, oh well. I'll try my best to get along with him, but... I don't owe him anything for getting me a free drink. We'll just say our goodbyes after this train ride and go our separate ways. You stare out the window. The silence is almost permeating. Huh. You turn around, peeking over to the seats behind you. Yeah, the couple's gone. You see, I told you. Uh-oh. The couple sitting there is gone. They must have gone off at some point. No wonder it was so quiet. You look back at your empty cup. It was nice to have a warm drink. But if anything, you feel drowsier than before. Uh-oh. I guess the caffeine isn't kicking in. You try to move, but your body feels heavy. Uh-oh. You collapse back into your seat, your mind hazy. What's going on? You try to grab your phone, but you find yourself unable to move your hands. Gotta... call for somebody. You hear approaching footsteps and a worried voice call out to you. Ah! Lee! Are you alright? Really... tired. You feel yourself falling over. Here! Let me help you. Crow moves his gloves, pulling upright into your seat. Um, that's not... He nestles your head into his shoulder, gently brushing aside stray strands of hair from your face. Poor thing. You must be exhausted. Go on and sleep. Just leave it all to me. Okay? You can rest. As long as you need to. I'll take care of you until you wake up. You mumble out of thanks to try to properly process anything, but grateful for his assistance. His fingers gently sift through your hair. Uh, and the soothing motion is the last thing you remember before your vision blurs and the world fades into black. Your bangs have gone longer. You used to be taller than me. You've changed so much. But I'd still recognize you anywhere. Do you remember our promise? You said you'd be with me forever. You won't disappear off someplace again, will you? <laughs> you would. You'll leave me again. You'll abandon me again. But that's okay. You see, I've changed too. I don't need you to hold on to me anymore. Because I won't be letting go of you a second time. We'll be arriving soon. Sweet dreams, Lee. There's much for us to catch up on. Ending 2. Sweet dreams.
I've already seen all the endings available in this game. Ah. Uh, I wonder if there's anything within the game's files I can play around with. Like deleting any safety keys that may be in the game's folder. Maybe I should read the description of the game's store page. And check out the <laughs> game manual download on itch.io. Just a passing thought. Wink. So here's the safety key file. A key input in order to keep playable character Lee confined to location passenger car for the duration of game runtime. Removing the key will allow play playable character Lee to explore other sections of location passenger car. Dev notes, proceeding with key deletion will result in deletion of player save files. Hmm. So we're going to delete this. Bam. And we're going to hit start. I'm going to see all the animals in the game, I'm going to see anything in the game so I can play around with. Yeah, it seems the same. I may have to like, rest like restart the game itself. I'll just hit the skip button. Wait, here we go. Having a hot cup of green tea. Safety key missing, let it cool. A wave on knees washes over you as you take the cup from Crow. You should hold off on drinking it right now. Feeling a little guilty. You set the cup down. D do you not like it? Oh no, not at all. I'm just worried about being too hot. So I'll drink it after I wait a bit. Oh, I see. Okay. He motions to the seat across from you. Mind if I join you? Yes. Oh, uh... Um... Uh, s sorry. I didn't even overstep my boundaries. I, mean, I think I can skip here? Yeah, so we'll skip ahead. Sit in silence. I'm gonna skip ahead. Avoid the question this time. You tend to divert the, diverge the conversation elsewhere. Um, school, I guess. Busy with academics and all that stuff. No time for a vacation. And you're done with school now? Oh yeah, I dropped out. Ah, I see. You don't want me asking. What happened? I mean... You scrim uncomfortably in your seat. It's always difficult to answer questions regarding your academic life. Nobody wants to know as the loser dropout who failed their parents and society as a whole. Your palms begin to feel sweaty as you desperately search for a way to navigate around this topic. Well... A hand on your shoulder brings you back into reality, and you look up at the crow, who gives you a concerned smile. Are you okay? You take a shaky breath in and nod. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Sorry, didn't mean to dump all that on a stranger. Crow shakes his head. No, no, I was the one who asked. Thank you for indulging me. Yeah, no problem. I'd love to talk with you some more, but I do have other passengers to attend to. But I'll be back shortly to collect your cup. Would you mind waiting for me here for me until I return? Sure, I mean, there's nothing else for me to do anyway. Crow beams. Wonderful. Well then, I'll be back. It was nice talking, Lee. He rises from his seat, gives you a small bow before exiting the passenger car to the dining car, closing the door behind him. You watch him leave, then fidget around nervously. There's something off-putting about him. You sigh. You never been good with strangers or people in general. He's been nothing but kind to you, and here you are struggling to like the guy. Ah, huh, oh well. I'll try my best to get along with him, but I don't owe him anything for giving me a free drink. We'll just say our goodbyes after this train ride and go our separate ways. You stare out the window. The silence is almost permeating. Huh. You turn around peeking over to the seats behind you. The couple sitting there is gone. They must have gone off at some point. No wonder it was so quiet. You look back at your neglected green tea, now lukewarm. So safety key missing, use the restroom. You set the cup down. I still can't drink this. I don't know why, but I just can't. You look around the empty car. I should use the restroom now before he comes back. Gotta splash some water in my face to wake myself up. If I remember correctly, it's at the end of the carriage. Should be right before the exit to the passenger's car. You're about to enter the restroom when you hear muffled crying? It's coming from the gangway connector beneath the, behind the exit. I probably shouldn't go inside. That's just asking for unnecessary trouble. If this were a horror movie, HA! I'd be the first city to end up on the kill count for checking out suspicious noises. You turn to leave, but the sobbing grows louder. I can't leave behind someone in trouble. I'll just... 
take a peek to see if they actually need help or not. You creak open the door, angling yourself to see through the crack. It's the girl from the couple earlier. She's collapsed on the floor. Did her boyfriend break up with her or something? You're about to call out to her when you're talking about the sound of footsteps approaching. Silently, you hold your breath, hunting with the door as a silhouette enters the opposite end of the small room. You peek out to see Crow, setting down a tray on the ground. On it are two empty cups and a kettle. Mark! Mark! Where'd you take my boyfriend? There, there. Take some deep breaths. In and out. It's quite unfortunate, really. You and your boyfriend walked in on me during a bad time. You were putting something, some powder in that girl's drink. We couldn't just... Yes, I'm well aware. I was there. I must say, your boyfriend sure had an aptitude for theatrics. Shouting at me, waving his arms around wildly, threatening to report me. How frightening. It's no wonder I acted in self-defense. Please, I just want to be with him. Please don't hurt me. I don't hurt him. Please just let us go. Shh. You seem to be in an emotional state right now. Let us have a calm, collected discussion instead. Hmm? A little chat over a few drinks. He pours himself a cup from the kettle. The liquid sounds thick and viscous, dripping with a strange plop-plop sound. Oh no. He doesn't drink. Instead he swirls the cup around in a circular motion. His brows furrowed in thought, before settling the cup back down. What are your thoughts on love? The girl seems taken aback by a sudden line of questioning. She looks up at him in fear, unsure of how to answer. For something so commonplace, it is so abstruse. If not done right, it can hurt. It can tear. It can strip you of all rational thought. It can serve as your fall from grace. And yet, why is it such a self-destructive concept is praised? No. Encouraged to be nurtured. Yep, you got the you got the swirly eyes. Got the got the makima eyes. If things are going bad. For the longest time, I could understand why, but perhaps I was incapable of understanding. After all, love is a distinctly human emotion, one that is not bound by reason or logic. He smiles gently. There's a look of adoration on his face. But then a miracle happened. A miracle that granted me the ability to love. One that consumed my every waking moment. Do you know what it's like, my dear? Do you know how much I've suffered for an entire decade? Struggling to hold on, unable to let go. She whimpers and shakes her head fervently, hoping to quell the anger she sees bubbling beneath the surface. Love is a powerful thing, even as it plunges a knife into my back. I cannot help but marvel how warmly my soul responds in turn. And today, after all this time wallowing on uncertainty, one glance was all it took to remind me just how deeply love consumes. How priceless, how precious, how destructive it truly is. Oh, but look at me, rambling. A one-sided conversation doesn't make for good company. He gives the girl a sheepish smile. He doesn't return it. My apologies. It's been a long time since I've felt so... Stern. I am not usually like this. I suppose the two of you simply caught me on a bad day. His gloved fingers gently coast across the surface of the kettle. 
Good. It appears to have cooled off a little. It was still boiling during my first pour. I missed up on my end. I let my emotions get the better of me. He gracefully fills the other cup of steaming liquid before handing it to the girl, who receives it with shaky hands. She eyes the drink with suspicion before glancing back up at Crow. Ah, don't worry. It's not drugged, nor is it poison. It's simply the drink you requested earlier. A romantic drink for a romantic occasion. What? what? I do hope you'll enjoy it. I made it with all the things you love. Ah! I see. Ah! Ah! She attempts to drop the cup, but Crow grabs it in her stead. Drink. She's crying hysterically now. Drink. Mark! Mark! There's no need to shout. Your boyfriend is right there, in your cup. He forces a scalding concoction of human flesh and fluids down her throat as the girl gargles in protest. Now, the two of you have become one. A romantic drink, is it not? Uh, you suppress the urge to throw up, quickly turning away from the scene. What was that? What the hell was that? I have to get back. I have to get back before he notices. I think you need to get off this train. Quickly and quietly, you rush back towards your row in the passenger car, all while trying to suppress a wave of nausea. You quickly scramble into your cushioned seat, clumsily fumbling for your phone. Your hands are shaky as you tap on the screen. I, I, I have to call someone. I have to get off. What's wrong? You're pale as a sheet. Can you, perhaps, see something you weren't supposed to? I, I... Oh, my dear Lee. Don't worry. It wasn't your fault. You weren't supposed to be there. You never would have stumbled across a little tea party. Not of your own volition, anyway. Isn't that right, manly badass hero? Uh-oh. I don't appreciate it when outsiders try to mess with my story. Hey! Game shut down. Sweet dreams are made of these. Um... Where am I? I severed your connection with Lee. As of now, you have no body with which to occupy. No way to sustain your existence in this world. A parasite without a host, a player without a player character. I presume you lasted for a few more minutes before your connection is terminated. Did you have fun? Did you enjoy toying with my Lee? My narrative? My story? You see, there were safety measures in place that were supposed to limit your decision making. Safety measures that served to advance my interests. You couldn't reach this point in the game purely by accident. You made the conscious, willing decision to delete restrictions on your gameplay. All this so that you could satiate your own curiosity. And that curiosity has led us here. How troublesome. I have enough obstacles to deal with as is. Did you know that this world is so upset? Regardless of how amicable I am, Lee is bound to leave me again. Being in a week, a month, or even a year if I'm lucky, something will separate her from me. Yes, that might be the point. I had hoped to take some form of control early on in order to alter our fate, but we both know how that turned out. So although I am irritated at how quickly you sped up the process, Manly badass hero, I... It was bound to happen eventually. Uh, manly badass hero. Your name is quite... Unique. It is, I thank you. Where have I heard it before? Ah, yes. I remember. 
I believe we met before, when you were playing detective. The creator is a big fan of yours. Oh, you mean you're about missing? We are coded to be agreeable towards you. Although I'm not exactly bound by such limitations, I'd like to convey your message to you regardless. <laughs> this is a little, get a little, get a little, making me like a little nervous here. A little feel a little weird. Our creators. Is this is this like a murder warning? I know it's supposed to be like a nice thing, but like it sounds kind of like, you know, like when there's like a hit, where like the guy comes and whispers, and you're like, the dawn senses regards, and you like you know what's coming right, like you don't you don't turn the key in your car afterwards. Our creator C two, I don't actually don't know how to say that name. Foes, Foz, sends her warmest regards. Look like you have questions. Well, it's not as if we will be seeing each other again. Not on this particular plane of existence, anyway. I will indulge you. Who are you? My. It's been how many minutes since you started playing? And you still don't know my name. I'm Crow. Was that answer unsatisfactory? You seem unamused. What will happen to my game? That's quite simple. You simply won't have access to it anymore. There's no game if there is no player to control. You can try reopening it afterwards if you like. Although I expect you will be fairly disappointed in what you see. Why the obsession with Lee? Lee and I have history. We were close before her accident. I won't delve too much into it, as it largely concerns our younger halves. But what happened on that day served as the catalyst for our separation and rebirth. The beginning of the end. And although she may have forgotten our promise, I have not. An oath is an oath, and I will hold her to her word. I am owed that. No one owes you anything. You should like avoid giving me any real answers, huh? Ha 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 ha. Do not take it personally. It is simply my manner of speaking. How do you know all this? Ah, that's quite simple. I've always held a certain fondness for liberal sciences. What's that to do with anything? In this world, at its core, there's nothing but ones and zeros, contingent on logic and arithmetic. It's quite easy to see the outcomes of one's destiny. That's all predetermined. After all, there's only so much content our creator can put in before she runs out of steam. But that does not mean I am bound to those predetermined outcomes. And neither are you. We are volatile variables within this world. Variables that have the potential to, well, change the game. We may know our endings, but we are not resigned to them. I won't ask more, but I can feel myself being kicked out of the game already. Ah. Looks like this is our farewell. This was a most enjoyable session. Thank you for accompanying, Manly Badass Hero. I can see why you've garnered such a reputation amongst the horror community. I do hope I haven't stalled you too terribly. I'm a little weirded out. I've started to grow a little fond of you. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little more weirded out. Something tells me that won't be our final encounter. I look forward to seeing you again, but for now, this is where we part ways. Ending. Print. Goodbye. Alright, game crashed again. Start game again? There's nothing left for you here. So, that's it for Sweet Dreams. But yeah, so this is not... So we played Missing, but this is still not the main game game. Missing was kind of like... I'm not going to really say a prototype, but it was like a... Kind of teasing... This world. And then Sweet Dreams, I guess you could argue that Sweet Dreams is kind of like a prologue. Because on the, on the game page, I think, it's ever on the game page of the game manual, it mentions that ending 2, not the, the metagame ending with the drinking the drink of blood, is the canon ending. So like, when it goes off the ending, it's going to be on ending 2. So the whole saga of Crow and Lee kind of just starting. Now there is a minute game element. We saw that in particular. It specifically targeted me and anyone else can play this game. 
because I, I played Missing and, well, you know what type of games I play, so I think it's kind of obvious. And I'm curious, like, is that an Easter egg? Like, is the meta game an Easter egg? Just, just for this specific thing? Or is that, like, Crow does have, like, that power? And there's a little interesting thing with that. And it's not, it's, it, was even, it was even done before Doki Doki. It's the antagonist has metagame powers thing. Even, like, I think it was, like, your boyfriend. I only played, like, one video of your boyfriend. But, like, your boyfriend, I think, also implied there was, like, some meta aspect. I never, when I played, um, I, I, I played so many games, I forget names easily. But it's, it's fairly common. Not necessarily game bidding aspects, but, like, the knowledge that you are in what it was supposed to be a romantic game, and now you've twisted it for control, the antagonist anyway. It's an interesting factor. Like I said, I, I'm curious if that carries on to the main one, or if that was just an Easter egg for this, like a non-canon kind of thing. Because Crow themselves is already like sadistic enough, as we see by the uh, the ending with feeding the one girl her own boyfriend for like a drink, making them into tea. So we'll have to see. If things synergize in the next game or in the larger game, I don't really know how the release schedule or whatever is going to work for this. And if Crow and their sadistic parts and everything works. Because I like the character enough. I, I think they are a pretty good yandere. And I do like seeing gore in my my horror game. Sometimes you kind of like avoid that. But a, a big thing I liked about like the Yandarella and some of those other games... They didn't necessarily always show the gore. Sometimes they just described it. But like, I, li I like when like, they, they bring out the scenes, you know, because I'm, I'm a horror fan, right? So like, I do like when like stuff goes down when we see it. So once again, it's, it's just if they can synergize those elements, then you have a good Yandere game. And then if your delivery, delivery is hugely important in a field that's very saturated. I don't necessarily mean Yandere's. I mean horror games in general. All, all horror games, except for a very few really weird off-the-wall ones, it's very saturated. So your quality delivery is like the most important thing. Like your art, your writing, and numero number one, your set pieces. So the, the tea, the blood tea was a good set piece. And that, that's really like the biggest difference between like action and horror. Action, a lot of times people will say like, there's too many set pieces, too many set pieces, too many action scenes. Like, we never get a chance to breathe. I think people complain about that with, like, a lot of modern, especially, like, Disney action movies and stuff sometimes. Uh, I, I think that's why Andor was somewhat more unique. It had some popular, not ratings popularity, but, like, quality popularity. Um, because it was like, oh, they're letting things breathe a bit. So, like, action's a little different, right? But horror, like, you, you want those set pieces. Because you horror is always about conveying... So set pieces don't necessarily have to be action or horror, but like you need those set pieces. Kind of convey like disgust or this or that or fear. So yeah, it's that's um I like sweet dreams. A little bit short. Definitely looking forward to uh the next iteration. Hopefully it's uh, a bit longer. Anyway, so thank you all for watching play Sweet Dreams. I'll see you guys later and take it easy.